Not only a real-life Prince Charming for our Cinderella, but even her very own real-life fairy godmother. You know, Jack, I wonder if Anne's fairy godmother created the perfect gown for our bride. I'll give her a call at the next break. <laughs> <laughs> right now, let's just watch Anne's dreams keep unfolding as we discover the true meaning of romance and destiny. Take a look at this. Anne and I actually met on spring break in 1994, and it was a total chance meeting. I went down to Florida to play in a college golf tournament with the rest of my team. And since we were only an hour away from Disney World, we just decided to go down there and have some fun. And on the way up the path to the monorail, both my brother and I kind of noticed two cute looking girls that got onto one of the uh, little trams. These two guys walked in and they kind of were standing right in front of us. And so his, his brother Todd started talking to my cousin Stephanie. And I was really shy, so I just kind of sat there. First of all, I want to set things straight here. If it weren't for me, there's no doubt in my mind that Michael and Anne would not be together. I've always been attracted to blondes, which she is, and it was just love at first sight. As we departed the monorail, we, we lost them, and we were, we were definitely looking for them. They spotted us as well as we spotted them, oh, and we ended up going hey. over, giving each other high fives. And from there, we just kind of decided to spend the rest of the day together. As we were going to the park, figuring out which rides to go on, Todd and I really didn't get an opportunity to kind of talk about, who do you like, who do I like? So we went on a couple of the rides together. We all rode together. Um, but then we, we hit one, uh, one point right before Space Mountain. And it, it was kind of apparent at that time that I liked her and that Todd liked her cousin. One of the rides that we went on at Disney World was Pirates of the Caribbean, and that was the first ride that we kind of sat together. And it's a little bit scary, but not really. And kind of reached over and kind of grabbed me, and then she didn't really let go. And I'm like, this is a good sign. By the middle of the evening, I realized that there was a spark in the air and that I needed to make this happen. I knew that he was far away and I was far away, but there was just something there that gave me hope that this would really work out and become something spectacular. The light parade started going around us, so we were actually stuck in there. It's an absolutely incredible light parade with Cinderella's carriage and everything like that all lit up. And uh, just out of a whim, we just started dancing together. The whole day, I wanted to go on the sky buckets. And finally, we got our chance. And I was excited because I knew he was going to kiss me. So on the whole ride over, I'm thinking of you know, how am I going to make my move? How am I going to kiss her? And uh, I waited and I waited until the point of th this was it. I had to do it now. We were going down. If I hadn't done it, we were it, I wouldn't have my chance. So I just kind of basically leaned over and we got a little closer and then we kissed. And as we kissed, the fireworks went off in the background. I think it was predestined, actually. Um, I think it's a blessing from above. And there's so many uh, coincidences and ironies that I think it was almost planned from above, meant to be. Well, what did I tell you? He said it himself. It was love at first sight, also known as being at the right place at the right time. And they live thousands of miles apart from each other, and yet here we are just a few minutes away from the two of them becoming husband and wife. Now that's...